I just wanted to give a quick overview of what's inside the enclosure for our wearable device. So we'll start with the sensors. Right here we have our BMP sensor. This measures altitude, temperature, and pressure. We have our GPS module right here. This is used to um, track the coordinates and send it to the SD card for, to be written. Uh, we have an accelerometer over here, which is underneath that wiring. That's used for fall detection. This is our boost converter right here. This is used to take the 3.7 volts coming out of the LiPo battery and boost it to 5.2 volts for the Arduino, which is underneath the PCB right here. Uh, from there, uh, right here, that's where the battery is being connected to the power boost. Uh, this is the charging wire for it. That is ran uh, in a loop. You can see this black wire right here, which gets fed out to here so you can charge it with a micro USB. The power boost recommended using a regular phone power brick. So to charge it, I ended up using a Apple 5 volt at 1 amp uh, charging brick to charge the battery. Over here is our Bluetooth transmission module. This is used to send data from the SD card module to the application. This right here is our GPS antenna. Uh, it's a little antenna that sticks outside of the enclosure so the GPS can get a faster fix. This is our Bluetooth button. This puts the device in sync mode so it can send the data from the SD card to the application. Here we have our record button. This puts the device in record state and it'll record all the data from the sensors to the SD card. This is our mode select switch. This is used to put the device into the lead or follow climb position. This is just a simple on off switch for the device. This is the charging port for the device. This connects to the power boost converter which in turn charges the battery. This is our GPS antenna. This is so the GPS can get a faster fix. This large white button is for gear placement, so the climber would hit that whenever they're placing a gear or wanting to record a certain time in their climb. So this was my final design for the enclosure. I added these four holes at the bottom of the unit to be used as uh, anchor points for the loops that will have the weaving of the rope go through it where it will let attach to the climber's harness. So these are the loops that will attach to the bottom of the unit where those square holes were. I made the base of the loops a little bit bigger so it can be used as an anchor point where it will pull on the inside of the unit and it won't come off. Uh, this hole right here is so the rope can be fed through and attached to the climber's harness. So this is where those four holes were on the bottom of the enclosure that I designed. And these things protruding from the bottom are those loops that I ended up making. And uh, as you can see, we were able to pass that weaving through for the climber to attach to their harness. Here is our Smart Climb application. A user is able to log in if they've already created an account or sign up for a new account. All of their information is being stored in Firebase. And this is just going to be a quick demonstration of a user being able to log in. So as we can see, the user was able to log in uh, November 15th of 2020. So here is what the user sees once they've logged in or created a new account for SmartClimb. Uh, there are four basic tabs, which include our home, routes, gear, and settings page. Um, in our home page, they're able to see the weather at their local area. They're able to start syncing and climb that they just finished. And they're also able to see a daily safety video. This is something that you'll see throughout our whole application. We really wanted for climbers to be able to have safety in their minds when they first open this application and as they're using it, because of course, as we know, Climbing is a lot of fun and can be very rigorous, but it can also be very dangerous and so we always want for our climbers to stay safe. In addition to that, and this is our routes page. This is where the climbers are able to see their, all of the routes that they have taken. Um, and within that, they'll be able to get more information. They are able to see the routes in 2D as well as in 3D. All of this will be explained in more detail uh, further in our presentation. In addition to that, they're able to see where they've placed their gear and um, how much they've used their rope and when it is time to uh, either get a new rope or start thinking about getting a new rope. And so for gear placement, once again, that will be broken down by the type of climbs they've had. And then once in their climb, they're able to see how many gear placements they've had. And then they'll be able to see it within um, 
their 2D perspective and then also in a 3D perspective. Um, in addition to that, like I mentioned, they'll be able to see how much they've used uh, their ropes and see what different types of ropes they use and they'll be able to be reminded when they'll need to start thinking of either um, getting a new rope or just completely getting rid of the rope that they have. For example, this one is saying that expires tomorrow. It'll tell them when they first got it, the length, the diameter, and any notes of when a fall has been detected when that rope is in use. Um, and so they'll be able to delete this as they get rid of the ropes and they can add more as needed as well. Then this is our settings page. So in our settings page, a user is able to see their information, whether that's their name, email, and password. They're also able to see the grade system settings depending on where they are climbing. In addition to that, they're able to change the frequency of the amount of climbs they want to have during a week. They're also able to change the notification settings. They're able to look at frequently asked questions. And these are just questions that we kind of came together and tried to see what could be useful for a new climber who has never done outdoor climbing before. Um, in addition to that, they'll be able to read our terms of use and our private policy. Lastly, something that I thought was really uh, something kind of cute and fun that we could do is allow all the users to be able to email us if they have any like concerns or questions with our application or really if they don't like something or want to have like a new feature that we may not have thought of before because of course you all have not climbed. Um, and so this is just great because they're able to kind of interact with us. And lastly, they're able to log out and go back to the front. Once the device is paired with an iPhone, the device enters sync mode once the blue button is pushed. Once in sync mode, on the application home screen, the user just has to press the start button and then the device will send all the data stored. When a trip has been successfully received, as you can see, the user can see information on the trip like the location, the date, and the time. The user then can name the trip and also has the option to save that trip if they want. Here you can see me import the trip up the tower, then the second import is the trip down the tower, and then the last import is us testing the fall detection. Once imported on the application, the route data is stored on our Firebase database. This includes all the trip data like the location, gear placement, and falls. Once all the trip data has been sent, the device sends a done signal, and the user can then exit out of the pop-up window and look at the routes on the routes page. After the route is downloaded from the device to the app, we can find it here in the, in the routes tab. So here we see it as 404 demo up. So once we click that, we see all the information and the 2D view on the map. So we can just click 3D view to go to the 3D view. And here you can see the 3D view. You can rotate it in any direction to get a different angle of the route. And there is a grid so you can see the depth of it so each line is spaced apart one meter and there's three uh, grid planes so there's in the x y and z planes so that's uh just they're just colored in different colors so it's green blue and red and the route has a color coding so green is fast yellow is uh, medium and red is the slowest speed so and then it just uh switches in between those two those three colors and on the right side, you can see the buttons. So the first one just hides the rest of the buttons so that you have a more screen space for the route. But once you pull them back out, you see the rest of the buttons. So you can see the first one under the hide button is the arrow pointing to the right. So that just moves to the next coordinate and it switches the coordinate info at the bottom, as you can see. So it's two seconds into the climb. And then you can the next button lets you once you click it, it allows you to select any part of the route and it jumps to that spot, as you can see here. And then the next arrow pointing to the left is just to go to the previous one before that. So then after that, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch back to the original spot. 
so start of the climb and then the next buttons which is the target and the four arrows kind of work together so that if you click the four arrows it locks rotation and lets you move the um, route anywhere you want on the screen so you can get uh, try to fit all of it at once and if you pinch zoom you can zoom in and out so once you unselect the lock rotation and translate you can go ahead and click the button above that which is a target symbol and it just recenters it back to the center of the screen and there we go back to the way we started the next button is a measurement so it shows a ruler so it just allows you to select any spot on the route and it adds a red dot with the measurement above it and that measurement is real time to from the red dots to the blue dot so it shows you how far apart they are and then the next button after that is just to toggle on and off the grid as you can see here if you want to use the grid to see depth if not you can go ahead and turn it off to get a better view i guess and then the camera at the bottom and the photo uh, work together so the camera allows you to choose a photo or take a photo so if you take a photo it takes out a camera and you can take a picture but if you cancel that you can choose one from your library so i'm going to go ahead and choose the tower we climbed so here we go so i'd add it here i'm gonna add the grid and take it off and then i'm just going to make it fit better on the climb so zoom in a little bit translate it rotate to best fit zoom in a little more and since the sensors aren't super accurate this is the best fit i can find right now so i'm going to go ahead and click the button above the camera button which is it shows an image so it just saves the image to my library so once you click it it saves go to my image library and here it is it saved the route onto the image and you can go ahead and share this or post it however you like and that's all for the 3d view all this was done using um metal ios on swift so it's just a library that lets you draw graphics directly on the gpu and if you want to reset this, you can just go ahead and go back and then jump back in and it's back to where it started. And that's all for the 3D view. Go. We're good, right? Yep.